suppose that you're a programmer who needs to use class foo. You didn't write class foo, but you need to use class foo. And particularly, you need to use function a. Well, you look at the interface for class foo, and you can see some documentation that says call initialize before calling other functions, and just lists the other functions. But that doesn't really explain how to use function a. So if you're not sure how to use function a in class foo, what do you do? Do you get up and go look up whoever wrote class foo and go to their desk and uh, interrupt them and say, hey, how do I use function a anyway? Uh, that would be regarded as rude in most programming environments. Uh, so you're probably not going to do that. Uh, do you pick up the phone and call the programmer who wrote class foo? Again, probably not because that's usually regarded as rude in most programming environments. Uh, would you log a defect against class foo and say, you know what, from the interface, I can't figure out how to use function a, and so this interface really isn't adequate, and I consider it to be defective, it should be fixed, and then I'll continue my work once that defect is fixed. Well, I think in many organizations that would be regarded as a sign of a lack of initiative and also wouldn't be considered to be a uh, good programming practice. So what do you do? Well, I think in the vast majority of organizations out there, if you can't figure out how to use function A, you go look at the detailed implementation code for function A. And this is a really big step because when we go look at the detailed implementation of function A, we have just blown away any semblance of encapsulation. There is no shred of encapsulation left when we are going and looking at the detailed implementation of function A. And this is why I say that in modern programming languages or currently popular programming languages, we really don't have good support for real encapsulation. In a, in a decent environment that supported encapsulation, we wouldn't be able to go look at function A, and yet I think this is common practice today. So okay, we go look at function A, and we read the code for function A, and we read this line that says, check whether initialize has, has been called. And then we see the code that says, if not already initialized, then initialize. And then we perform the rest, the code performs the rest of function A. And so then, what do we do? Well, then we go write client code based on our knowledge of the detailed inner workings of function A that doesn't actually call initialize first. We write client code that says, you know what? Based on my detailed reading of the internal workings of function A, I see that I do not have to call initialize, despite the fact that the interface says I'm supposed to call initialize, based on the fact of my detailed reading of the inner workings of function A, I'm not going to call initialize because function A will call that for me. And so when I make that decision, I'm doing what's known as programming not to the interface, but, to the, but through the interface and to the underlying implementation. And this is highly problematic because when I'm writing code not based on the documented interface, which is at least has some uh, aspiration that it's supposed to remain stable under change, but when I am ignoring the published interface and writing code based on the underlying implementation, then I am writing code that is specifically targeted at something that, by definition, is supposed to be able to change. Uh, with the interface, the whole reason we have an interface is so that we can change the underlying implementation without the interface changing. But there's, and so there's an expectation, or at least an aspiration, that that interface will remain stable even as the underlying code changes. But we don't even have an aspiration that the underlying code is supposed to remain stable. We actually expect the underlying code to change. And so when we're actually writing code through the interface to the underlying implementation based on uh, detailed knowledge of the implementation, then we're just asking for problems because we know that that code is going to change. And then we can expect that the client code we write is going to break. Now, this particular example is a little extreme in that we are expressly violating a rule that was set up in the interface. But I think the general pattern here is actually pretty common. Uh, the general pattern here would be more like there's no comment that says call initialize before calling on other functions. That's just an unstated expectation on the part of the person who created the class. And so now when the programmer who's writing client code for class foo uh, goes and reads the implementation, that actually becomes the documentation the de facto documentation for class foo. And so 
the example I gave was kind of sharpened to make the point, but I think in practice we see exactly the same dynamic with exactly the same result, which is code that is written based on detailed knowledge of the underlying implementation is being written to a target that by definition is supposed to evolve and change. And so by definition is really expected, should be expected to break the code that is written to it. So what we're seeing here is that without encapsulation, abstraction tends to break down. That is, if we can't fully hide the implementation details, then people will make use of their knowledge of those underlying implementation details and as a result will end up violating the, what the expectations or assumptions in the interface. And so this is problematic for the reasons that I described. And what that means is that the interface the real interface is no longer the documented def uh, class interface. The de facto interface becomes the current temporary implementation. And that's not an interface. That's basically a recipe for future problems in the code. Uh, the example that I gave showed an example of subtle semantic coupling between the client code and the implementation code, uh, where the client code is coupled not to the documented interface, but it's coupled to some unintended semantics uh, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, implementation code of the class. Now, walk that forward a little bit and see what really happens under modification. You can easily imagine that in that example, the programmer who wrote class foo gets to a point where maybe in function A they can't really tell anymore whether initialize has already been called. And so the programmer says to himself or herself, you know what, they're supposed to, whenever anybody uses this code, they're always supposed to call initialize first. I can just take this code out that checks whether initialize has already been called, and really nothing should happen because it's clearly documented that initialize is supposed to be called first. So the programmer under modification takes that code out, and now the system breaks, but this is a hard to find error because we can't go easily search for every place that initialize wasn't called. Uh, and so we've got an error that's a little bit hard to fix. I like the way that PJ Plowger sums this up. He says, it ain't abstract if you have to look at the underlying implementation to understand what's going on. Uh, and I think this is really an issue. I think we as an industry could pay a lot more attention to the abstractions that are presented in the interfaces. Uh, <clears throat> we've talked about how uh, when the interface is not fully descriptive, then the natural response is to go read the implementation to learn how the class works. Uh, I think this is business as usual in most organizations. In fact, I would go further and say I think most organizations regard this as a sign of good initiative for the programmer who's working on client code not to bother the programmer who wrote the class, but to go look at the underlying implementation. And I think, well, I do think that the initiative there is good. I think the overall dynamics end up being very unhealthy. Uh, and so I think what really needs to happen is that we as an industry need to be much better about focusing on interfaces and making sure that we're creating abstractions that are truly usable by other programmers. And when we can get to that point and reduce the need for programmers to go look at the underlying implementation code, then the abstractions will be stronger. And as a result, I think we will uh, see fewer subtle defects related to this notion of semantic coupling to the underlying implementation. In general, I think a higher focus on interfaces would be, uh, is important. Uh, there's no question that implementation code affects code quality. Uh, we all know that. Uh, but I think that Im interfaces are what affect the longevity of a system, our ability to extend the system, our ability to scale up a system and have more people working on it, and so on. Um, for sake of argument, if you were to say, look, I can have one of two options. I can either have a system that has really well-defined interfaces, very clean, well-thought-out interfaces, but really low-quality implementation code, or I can have a system that has really high-quality implementation code, but the interfaces are pretty crummy and not well-thought-out. Which of those would I rather have? Which of those options would actually last longer and allow me to continue to build on the system and move over time toward an ever higher quality system? Well, I think clearly uh, door number one here is actually the better option. If I take door number two and I have poor quality interfaces but really awesome quality implementation code, that might be okay on day number one, but on day number two as I have programmers begin to write code to exercise those poor quality interfaces, 
I'm going to be back in this scenario that we've been talking about where programmers start to make assumptions uh, based on the implementation rather than based on the interfaces. My system's going to be increasingly intertwined. And as time goes by, I'm just going to get more and more ripple effects and hard to find errors. And eventually, the complexity is going to get out of control. If, on the other hand, I choose door number one, where I have initially really crummy implementation code, but super high quality interfaces, well, this is actually OK, because I can go in behind each of those interfaces, and I can selectively improve the quality of that crummy implementation code and make it better and better. And there aren't any ripple effects, because the interfaces are super high quality. I can also extend the system and add code, even if the underlying implementation is not very good, because I'm adding code to well-defined interfaces. And as I fix bugs, again, no ripple effects. So for sake of argument, if I had to pick one or the other, I would actually pick high quality interfaces, not, uh, not necessarily focusing on high quality implementation code. Fortunately, I don't have to pick one or the other. I can pick both. And what I'm really trying to say here is, I think in practice, what we see is that programmers basically focus entirely on the implementation code and then sort of treat the interfaces as an afterthought. And the point I'm trying to make here is, we really need to change the emphasis somewhat so that we're putting as much emphasis on the interfaces as we put on the implementation code. And if we can put good emphasis on both of those areas, then I think we will have much more high quality systems and we will do a much better job of managing complexity. Thank you.